Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Wolves of Shadowed Fate Episode 6 Chapter 30-35 Raven's POV I am standing with my brothers at the top of the stairs as we wait for our queue to come down. I felt Austin squeeze my hand to give me comfort, and I looked over at him with my eyebrow arched in question. I wondered how he knew I needed support and he linked to me, I heard your heartbeat. Don't be nervous sis. We will stay with you the whole time. His affectionate nickname calmed me as we stand there. I have never been called sis before, and I have to say that I love it. Reagan had never wanted to admit that we were even sisters. The pack only knew because mom gave birth to us at the same time, or they would have probably tried to deny it. Carter said, it's time to go and we started down the stairs. I can feel hundreds of people looking at me, as I descend the stairs arm in arm with my brothers. I want to, but I can't manage to make myself look up to stare back at them. I hear a low growl that sends a shiver up my back, but I try not to be obvious about it. I had to focus on other things, like getting down this stairwell alive. I was scared of making a misstep and tumbling down the stairs. I am not the most confident in my heels just yet. I know that I will be just fine on the main floor, I just don't want to embarrass my family with my actions. I stepped carefully and tried to calm the beating of my heart. I want to present myself in a positive light and make my family proud tonight. I hope that this night will go smoothly and that no one will start any problems or try to embarrass me tonight. I still can feel the sting from the embarrassment and hate that my family at Silver Blade had for me. I would do anything for my current family's affection to stay where it is right now. I am actually thankful for what Reagan did now. Justin was weak, and I would not have found my family if I hadn't been in so much pain that I had to leave Silver Blade. I actually feel the support and affection that they already have for me coming to me through our bond. I feel the pride that Dad and Olivia have for me. That is something that I have always wanted in my life, and no matter what I did to please Alpha Graham and Luna Cassandra, they were never proud of me, for any of my achievements. Not being valedictorian, and having the highest GPA. Never causing problems in or out of the pack house. I know that tonight will be fine, no matter what happens. There is nothing that Reagan can do to ruin this for me, she is just one person, and she can't control everyone. I doubt that she will be able to put a dent in the happiness that my family gives me. We reach the bottom of the staircase and Stella comes running up to me, squealing in happiness. She had found her mate and pulled him forward to meet me. He was very handsome and clearly strong. His power poured off of him and I could tell that he was a ranked wolf. I was happy for her but worried as I didn't know how far away she would be from me. She was my best friend, but I can understand the pull of the bond. The way his hand hung possessively on her waist I could tell that he was not letting his mate get away from him. His love for her was clearly showing on his face. He was 6'3 of solid muscle, dark brown hair and sparkling hazel eyes that were already looking at Stella in a doting way. He was clearly just as happy with having found his mate, as she was with him. He looked to be in his early twenties but they looked great together, and Stella was almost vibrating in happiness from finding him. Nide to meet you, Raven, I am Truett Logan, beta for the Black Adder Pack, he tells me as he holds his hand out to me to introduce himself. I smiled up at him and shook his hand. I have heard good things about your Alpha Brandon from my father. Dad is clearly impressed with how he is running things there and had told me that he would be here tonight, I look forward to getting to meet him. You have been blessed with a wonderful mate, Truett. I hope you love and appreciate her, she is my best friend, and she deserves all the love in the world. I will miss her terribly I told him 
and I saw a small frown on his forehead before he smiled again. I know, my mate is wonderful. I was blessed by the goddess, but we are very close to Blood Walker. You are always welcome there Truett told me. Yes, it wasn't that far, I can always visit, that was probably what the confusion was for. I am still learning how to drive, so as soon as I can get my license I can get there quickly, without having to ask for a ride. He probably sensed my warning in what I said, I didn't go the extra mile and tell him that he better treat her well, or it will not end well for him, but it won't if he doesn't take care of her properly. I wanted you to know first, Raven. I am going to go and introduce him to my parents and Joshua now. I am so happy Stella tells me, and I can see her eyes are shining with love. She is happier right now than I have ever seen her. I am happy for her and smiled back at her, I won't let my going to miss her, take any of her happiness or joy from her. She will realize it soon enough when she goes to pack, and it will be a bittersweet moment. But I am so happy for her to have found her mate. Carter told us that he would be right back and started heading in the area toward Dad. I could see Dad's head across the room, and he is caught up in a conversation with a few other men who have their backs toward me. Must be some pack business, I will get with Dad later. Austin puts my arm through his and he leads me around to the other side of the room from Dad as I am greeted and exchange pleasantries with a great number of people. There is no way that I can remember all the names, and faces. There are about 400 people here at the ball, and I am starting to get overwhelmed. I keep smiling and greeting people and then met someone who clearly has an issue with me. Her face looks like she stepped into a pile of dog poo, and I knew that this conversation was not going to be a very good one. Raven, I have heard a lot about you a tall blonde said to me as she looks me up and down. The sneer on her face was unnecessary, her words and tone already let me know that she has contempt for me, even though I am positive that we have never met each other before today. It is wise to make your own conclusions about someone. Listening to others just gives you their opinions, which may not always be correct. It is best to get to know someone before you judge them I told her in a calm manner. She is angry with me, I can feel it, and I have no idea who she would even be. Maybe this is one of Reagan's friends from another pack, that makes sense. Reagan has been taking crap about me for years. They even look alike. Must be friends, and I no longer want to speak to her anymore. She is here to cause trouble, and I am not going to participate. Austin can feel it when I turn to walk away and as soon as we take a step to leave, she starts up again. Only louder this time she is much louder. Her goal is clearly to discredit and embarrass me. She is here to stir up and cause problems, and I will not allow it. Dad and Olivia worked hard to get this done, I will not let this petty princess cause an incident here at my party. Running away again, Raven? I heard that is what you do best. But I haven't even done anything to you yet? Why run? Can you not be pleasant and courteous to your guests, the tall blonde taunts me, and my back stiffens. I know now that Reagan sent her, but Reagan has no idea how much I have changed in the last few weeks. I turned back to her with a smile and noticed that although some have stepped back to give us room in case of a fight, they are all standing there to see what was about to happen. I look at her beautiful face and just like with my sister, it can't cover up her ugly heart either. The spite and anger radiate out of them both. I slip my arm out of Austin's and I heard him sigh. He wanted me to let it slide, but I have let enough slide in my life. I need to start letting people like this know that I am not going to run when people obviously have an agenda. Oh, I am sorry. I thought you were through. We don't know each other, and clearly, you have an issue with me. Why would I waste my precious time with you, instead of meeting these lovely people who came here to meet me? 
So please, say whatever it is that you are wanting to say, so I can continue on with my party. I don't want to look at your angry face anymore. Haven't you been told that a smile makes you more beautiful? Well, at least better than how you look right now I told her, and she gets even madder. Good, that is what I wanted. I want her to hit me, I wanted her to try to hurt me. I know Reagan and the Sullivan family are around here somewhere, pulling the strings for this one, and I want them to see the show too. You, I heard about you trying to steal my friend's mate. It is clear to me that is who you are. Acting so high and mighty because you just managed to show up in the middle of the night to claim to be Alpha Cole's daughter. You are just trash. Trash that wants to take other she-wolves mates. You are trying to take mine from me too, but you won't succeed. He will be mine tonight. I will win, and you will lose the girl said, and I have to frown, not one word of that is true. I can see Reagan's influence in some of it, but not about me trying to steal her mate. I have no idea what she is talking about with that. I don't know her, or her mate. How could I possibly be trying to take her mate? if I don't even know either one of them. Don't pretend to be dumb you slut. Brandon is going to take me as his chosen, you can't come up and try to take him away from me. I have been after him for over three years, he is mine, you need to leave him alone she screams out even louder in her fury, and I see what is happening now. She is paranoid that I was going to take her mate away from her. I realize that she said chosen, that is why she is so pissed off. She is clearly paranoid, or just crazy, as I still don't have any idea why she thinks that I was trying to take her man. First of all nothing that you just said was true. My true mate decided to make a deal to become the Alpha of Silver Blade and took my sister Regan as his chosen mate. That didn't have anything to do with me. He was mine, and she took him so you got that totally backward. So try to get that straight in your little brain. Second, I don't even know you, let alone this Brandon person. Never met him, do not know him. So don't assume in your paranoid little pea brain that this is anywhere near the truth either. Obviously, you are listening to Reagan's little lies. Try to think for yourself, okay? Go find your man, and leave me alone. I am not involved in your little drama, so leave me out of it. Approach me again and I will not be nice about it. Please feel free to stay away from me the rest of the night, no correct that, the rest of my life. You are clearly unhinged I told her and turned away to go to tuck my arm back through Austin's. When I felt her try to rush me. I was glad for the slit down the side of my dress now, as I kicked her in the stomach as she was about to jump on me. The kick knocked her back with the crowd quickly splitting apart to let her land on the hardwood floor. She growled loudly and came at me again this time with her claws extended to try to cut me. She wants to end me, and I am not going to allow it. I sidestepped her and bent over causing her to sail past me, and hit the floor again. She had her warning, she wants to do this, so I will grant her, her wish. When she rushed back at me, I kicked her again and this time I felt my heel cut into her face on her cheek. She was going to receive a permanent reminder of her mistake to carry with her for the rest of her life. Her wolf would heal her, but it is going to leave behind a scar. Maybe she will remember to not attack people for no reason after this. Her scream of fury rang through the entire place. People were looking down from the second floor and watching us. That embarrassed her even more and when she went to attack me again, Olivia stepped in front of me. Who are you? Who invited you to the ball? Olivia asked in her Luna tone. Cheryl Peters, I am the daughter of the Gamma for the Black Adder Pack. I came with them Cheryl told Olivia but was refusing to keep eye contact. That is a lie. You were banished along with your parents yesterday. 
Do not try to lie or drag us into it. You are not a member of our pack anymore. I can scent that you have a new pack now, but I am not familiar with the scent of it Truett said in a loud tone, with Stella wrapped up at his side. He was holding Stella back actually, as she wanted to join in, but he could tell I had it. Although, to be honest, I would like to hit her a few more times. But I had done enough damage to her, her cheek had been cut open, and blood was steadily dripping down onto her beautiful baby blue dress. Her dress looked terrible now, and her formerly attractive face didn't look quite so good anymore. He is right, that scent is familiar to me, and I stepped forward to take a deep breath and announced, she is now a member of the Silver Blade Pack. Olivia let out a roar of anger and stepped forward toward Cheryl. She was angrier than I have ever seen her, and I was glad to get a first row view of this playing out. I didn't invite you. Raven only invited four from the pack, did you come with them? Oliva asked calmly. Wow, that was fast, and Cheryl would be stupid to think that Olivia was suddenly calm. I can see my dad and Carter heading this way. Reagan told me that I could come with them. I am sorry Luna, I meant you no disrespect Cheryl said and tilted her head in submission. Reagan cannot invite people to our event. You dare to come here, trespassing, and then speak lies about our family member for whom the ball is. Are you insane? How could you have thought that you could get away with it? You won't, as a matter of fact. You are very bold to just stand there and lie right to my face Olivia motioned two warriors forward and Cheryl was drug away screaming for help while she was escorted to the cells. Alpha Sullivan, Luna Cassandra, please step forward from wherever you are hiding in here, and clear this situation up Olivia's voice bounced off the walls in her anger. I see them coming up from the back of the group near us. They are walking proudly with their heads up but they know that this is not going to end well for them. From the blush showing on her cheeks, Luna Cassandra is totally embarrassed about the situation. Let me clarify Luna Olivia, we did not invite her. Reagan did. She came here with Reagan and Justin tonight. We didn't have anything at all to do with it Alpha Graham started out. Where is Reagan then? Do you know? My dad asked. She is here somewhere, Luna Cassandra said quietly. She is indeed here somewhere, I will be glad to take you to her, Alpha Cole said to them. Where is she, Alpha Cole? Alpha Graham asked. In my cells, waiting for her punishment to be decided my dad said, and gasps of shock, and some in outrage, were heard all around the room. Chapter 31 Alpha Cole's POV The day of the ball is here, and I am excited to soon introduce our daughter to our allies, and the council members that were coming. I hadn't originally planned on inviting them to the ball, but then, I got a surprise visitor last night, and my plans changed. I am glad that they took it seriously enough to come out and help us with it. I was furious but knew I needed to keep a cool head in this. We cannot tip anyone off that we knew, or the whole thing would go up in flames. I cannot allow this to slip out of my hands. I was not happy about it, but I was very glad that we had been given a heads up, so we can make the plans we need to, to make sure that the proper people be punished. Flashback Beta Timothy had called me to our gates last night, for a surprise visitor, and one I frankly didn't want to see but I was told that it was important, so I would hear him out. The story that Justin gave me was almost unbelievable. I was doubting it through the first part of it until he got to where Reagan was going to help this Cheryl take Raven's second chance made away. I knew that Justin had been heartbroken at accepting Raven's rejection. I could clearly see it. I could also see that he was telling the truth now. I have to say that even with his clear jealousy that Raven was getting a second chance mate, he still wanted to help her. How else could he have known that Brandon was Raven's mate? 
Only Olivia and I knew she was. So I knew I needed to get a lot done tonight, I was glad that he showed up here kind of early, at 5 p.m. I was impressed with him even having the balls to come here, despite knowing that he was at the top of my ST list, well near the top, he is a solid number 4 on the list. But if he prevents their plan from working, I will be very grateful to him, he might even come off my list. Why did you tell us, Justin? Your chance with her is gone, as you and Reagan are a mated couple now. You had no real reason to give us this warning I told him. I know that Alpha Cole. My heart is broken because I was stupid and too weak to want to claim Raven as my mate. She had been picked on and abused my whole life. I didn't want to have to fight the whole pack daily, for claiming her. I have no excuse at all, as I have no defense for my actions. But after I touched her, and felt the tingles between us, I wanted her. I begged her to come back the night she ran to your pack. Reagan had her dad force me back to the pack after I ran away to go get Raven back. They were going to banish my family, we have been with the Silver Blade pack for over 100 years, as beta-ranked wolves. I knew that he would probably kill them and tell me that he had banished them, I had no choice but to return. Alpha Graham and Reagan cannot be trusted. I set Reagan straight, and I will not be with her again, because she ruined my life. If I can pay her back for what she did to me and Raven, I will Justin told me, and I believed him. I could see how upset he still was over this, even weeks later. I will be calling the council in on this. What they are planning is serious. Are you okay with telling the council your story too? We will need as much evidence of their wrongdoings as we can get. I don't want them getting off with a slap on their hand. I want them to be punished for the years of abuse they put Raven through I said to Justin. I wanted him to know that this was not staying between us, but that I will, in fact, be pushing it forward to make sure that the people who needed to be punished had enough brought to light that they wouldn't be able to keep it hidden in the shadows anymore. I will help you. I always thought that Raven was a sweet and shy she wolf. She is beautiful, and I am glad that she is finally getting treated the way she should have been all these years. I just wasn't thinking that she was worth fighting for until I touched her. Now, she is all that I can think about. I close my eyes, and she is there, I wish I had been stronger and taken her away from that pack the moment I realized that she was my mate. I will forever be sorry for my actions on this. I pray that one day the goddess allows me to get a second chance mate. Maybe helping Raven now will put me back in the goddess's good graces Justin tells me. We make plans and make sure that everyone is on board with them before Timothy and I head to my office. We need to get some calls made. Timothy called the council, and I called Brandon. Alpha Cole, I wasn't expecting a call from you tonight. I was planning on seeing you tomorrow. Is everything okay? Brandon asked me, and I know that he is about to get really pissed off with what I was about to tell him. Brandon, I have something to tell you, but first, I have a few questions for you. Did you have a gamma by the name of Silas Peters? Do you know Cheryl Peters? I asked him. Yes, they were the reasons I was having to get my pack straight. Her father wanted me to claim her as my chosen mate. I refused. They wouldn't stop their plans, so earlier today I banished them from my pack. I will not allow people with an agenda to be here or cause my mate any problems or pain. They had been warned and given a final warning, and still continued. Why? Did they come to you to seek asylum? Brandon asked me. No son, it is worse than that. I wanted to tell you in person, but for you to get up to speed I will have to fill you in on Raven's background. We have a bigger problem now, and we need to get it sorted quickly I told Brandon and then gave him some of Raven's background 
and about how she had been raised. He needed to know how bad Reagan really was, so he would have the proper respect for the plan. He has to know that she had already been successful already with it, so there was no room for mistakes. I will not allow Raven's second chance mate to get snatched away as Justin had been. They will not hurt my baby girl with their vicious plans. I am just glad that Justin had been good enough to share it with us. If he hadn't, I would have killed the Sullivans and the Peter families for causing my baby girl to feel that type of pain again. Brandon stayed quiet through my story. When he did speak, he had emotion in his voice when he asked, did they physically harm her? He knew I had held back, just giving him the pertinent information that he needed to get him up to speed, but he knew, he could feel it. They did indeed have a very strong bond. They did I answered him. I stayed silent while he dealt with the pain. I see that Alpha Sullivan and Luna Cassandra have just made a new enemy. He needs to stay focused on Reagan right now, as she is willing to overstep, time and again, to hurt Raven. Graham and Cassandra knew I have warned them twice, they would not get another warning. I would raise the pack, and not think badly about doing it. I can tell that he is trying to calm himself, and his wolf. It is hard to not want blood when someone hurts your mate. Okay. I will link my dad and crew to come and join us in making the plans. I refuse to allow Cheryl to touch me, I want Raven, and no one else. I can't allow their plan to work Brandon told me, and we waited for about four minutes while his dad and younger brother came to the office. We have to make plans now to make sure that they are not successful in their attempt. Not going to give them even an inch of room for it to work, I completely agree with him. I would kill them both before they could hurt my daughter. We spent the next 30 minutes getting our plans together. Beta Timothy put his phone down next to mine so the council member that he had got on the phone, Arnold Emerson, could also have input in the conversation. I have to say that we made some pretty good plans. We made sure that Brandon would not be able to ingest the drugs into his system. I also had cameras installed all over the first floor, I called that team in first, as soon as I found out. I was not going to take a chance on this at all. Reagan wasn't going to weasel out of getting what she deserved this time. She was going to receive the maximum amount of punishment, and I was going to make sure of it. The night of the ball, I knew who growled when Joshua caught Raven on the stairs. I smiled, as I am still the same way over my beautiful Olivia. We all knew our roles and Beta Timothy and Amanda were going to keep any outside people from getting involved. Justin didn't have the whole plan that Reagan had come up with. He just heard the first half of it, where Reagan told Cheryl that she would text Cheryl to come forward and get Brandon. That way when the drugs kicked in, he would be with her, overwhelmed with passion, and take Cheryl marking her as his mate. We didn't need to know anything past that. The fact that Reagan would go so far as to take Raven's second chance mate away from her like that. I have never before seen a level of hatred and viciousness ever before. It lets me know that we will never know all of the atrocious cruelties that Raven had to suffer there at Silver Blade. It was a next-level betrayal that Raven didn't deserve. Hadn't Reagan taken everything away from her already? She should stop now and just leave Raven alone. Why does she have to want to hurt her so badly? I cannot imagine the hate that this girl is carrying to want to hurt her own sister like this. For what reason? To what end? I just cannot understand it. That night I had the whole Beta family come into the office, along with Olivia, so we could get them up to speed. That no matter what Raven could not be left alone, and neither could her mate, Brandon Adams, of the Black Adder Pack. They were all surprised that she had a mate, even more, so that Raven herself wasn't aware of it, so once I have them up to speed we covered what was going to happen the next night. I had brought in Laney and Charlie too. 
we had to get all of the bases covered and have people around that can blend in and not tip our hand that we knew that a plan had even been made. We just needed to keep Brandon and Raven safe, at the party, and then get them together. Olivia was pissed that they would dare to come here and cause problems for Raven at her own party. Those two girls better look out, Olivia may take care of them both before I can get my hands on them. I warned them that they had to be alert and assume that additional plans had been made to try to hurt Raven or Brandon. I had Lainey and Charlie, who were our lead trainers bring in another male and female to watch the Sullivan couple while they were here. I will not give any of them a reason to be able to hurt any member of my pack, especially not my family. I asked my Gamma to have his son, Ethan, Shadow Justin. I knew he was broken hearted and wouldn't put it past him to not try to beg Raven to take him back. She wouldn't, but he might be obsessed enough that he would be willing to die on that hill and take Raven with him. It was easier to make the plans now, as Justin and Brandon were both thinking with their hearts, instead of their minds. That won't work out well for them, I will remind Brandon to focus more at the party tomorrow. Timothy and I stayed up until midnight making plans placing the main characters in specific areas. The most important was Brandon. I wanted, no I needed, to get Reagan dead to rights on this. I wanted video proof, and witnesses to corroborate what had happened. What I wanted most was for the council to see what was happening with their own eyes. To charge them with premeditation, and anything else that I could throw the book at them. I want Reagan to go away and Raven to finally have some peace. Even with the plans I have in place, I was still nervous about everything and just couldn't sleep. I stared at the ceiling not able to shut my brain off. It wasn't just the plans, it was much more than that. I just got my daughter here, and as much as I love my sons, the way my daughter looks up to me like I hung the moon up just for her, is so much different. I had always heard the quote, Mama's boys, and Daddy's girls. I didn't understand it before, but I get it now. The pain of having to let her go, when I just got her, hurts me so much more than I expected it to. I am in emotional pain, and sad, at knowing that my daughter will be leaving soon. I know that Brandon will be a good mate for her, and protect her, but I would love for her to stay here with us, for the rest of her life. Hard to give her up when I had missed so much time in her life. I feel a hand reach out across my chest and my wife getting my full attention. Olivia then sits up a little and teases me with a deep kiss. I already know she is trying to distract me, and it is working. I instantly harden up, and after she slides her hand down my stomach, giving me a few strokes to let me know where she is going with this. I watch my beautiful mate slowly lower herself, and I cannot contain the groan of pleasure that comes out of me. Olivia is a goddess in the moonlight as she starts off slow, giving me comfort, before speeding up the pace and tilting forward a little so her CT gets rubbed as she uses my CK to stimulate herself. I feel her slowly stroke my chest, and then down to my V-cut. When I feel her hands grip my shoulders tighter, I know it is time for me to finish this for her. Olivia smiles as she knows it too, and I grab her waist and turn us over. I stay still as I look into her face and slowly stroke my thumb on her cheek, she is so beautiful, I cannot believe the blessing that I got from this woman being my mate. The goddess has truly been good to me. I pepper kisses on her face and nip my mark as I allow her to come down a little, I knew she was almost there, but I wanted to be the only reason for her to come undone. I want her to know how much she means to me, how she is my world, and forever will be. I propped myself up on my forearms and I start a slow thrust to get her warmed up again. Olivia gives me a smile and begs me, faster, baby. I knew she was going to be impatient. We have been together for over 18 years, I know my mate, and what she likes. 
I braced on one arm and slide my hand between us and started working her clit as I sped up just a little bit on her. I see her bite her lip to stay quiet, but I know her tricks. She will have to wait on what she wants. I want her to come at least twice tonight. We have been so busy lately with the plans, training, and everything else going on. She needs and deserves this. She had a nightgown on when she came to bed, but feeling me so upset she wanted to comfort me, even without my asking. That is the beauty of the mate bond. I needed her, and she came to me. I will give her anything she asks for, and I heard her low moan as her legs start to shake. I will give her what she just asked for now. I am thankful for you, baby. You are perfect, and I love you. I don't tell you that enough. You are my everything, not just my Luna. Thank you for giving me my sons, and for being a loving mother to a child that we never expected to be blessed with. Not everyone could accept that, but you knew that Raven was mine, and you made her ours. That means more to me than you will ever know. Let's get some sleep we have a big day ahead of us tomorrow I tell her as I gave her another kiss. I can see the tears in her eyes at what I said, but I meant every single word. Whether it is my wife or my children, I will not allow anyone to hurt any of them ever again. I fall into a deep sleep with my mate wrapped up in my arms. Flashback ends I keep a careful eye on Reagan and watched as she puts the drugs into the drink in her hands. She is so confident that she won't get caught, that she didn't even look around. Most people would have had to glance around to see if anyone was looking, but she didn't, she honestly didn't think she would be caught, she is so confident in what she is doing. She just keeps waiting for her moment, and I realize that Joshua is still with Brandon. It looks like they are in a regular conversation, so that is good. I linked Joshua, and he excuses himself and walks on. Reagan doesn't rush in, she is very careful, and watches Brandon for a little while. I can see that he is looking over at Raven, and I can see when Reagan gets a little worried that he might see Cheryl. She still stayed pretty calm as she moves forward to intercept him. I can now see when he goes to go help Raven, that thankfully Olivia is already there to do it. Reagan put herself right in his path. If I didn't already know the plan, I would have missed her deliberate act. She is very good at this. I can see her trying to use charm on him, not realizing that it is not going to work. It is a very good thing that we were told what was going to happen tonight. No matter what Justin's real reasons behind it were. Because this could have worked out very differently tonight if we hadn't had a heads up. Plus, it gave me the opportunity to have the council here to be a witness to this. She won't be able to weasel her way out of this. I wanted her to pay for everything that she has ever done to my daughter through the years. I am glad that this was sorted and done, and that Raven will get her vengeance. Chapter 32 Brandon's POV I cannot believe what Alpha Cole told me last night about what Silas and Cheryl are planning on doing. How did I miss how despicable they truly are? My parents were just as stunned, especially after I gave them my suspicions about what I thought Gamma Peter's goal really was. I am sick of the lengths that Cheryl will apparently go to try to get me as her mate. When I believed that there was no possible way for it to work, I was assured by Alpha Cole, that it not only could work, but that is what happened to Raven's true mate just a few weeks ago. He had warned me not to take their plan lightly, as it very well could work out in their favor. The fact that she had a mate before me was very upsetting to me. She is mine. I growled out in both anger and jealousy. I was her mate, not him. He might have been her mate at one point but they were nothing to each other now. I felt a little bad about thinking that, once Alpha Cole told me that he was the one who had, in fact, told on Reagan and Cheryl's plan. I don't know why he told, he might have done it to make Raven happy, 
or to keep me from the same fate that he got, or if he just was so mad at what Reagan did that he wants to pay her pack. I don't care if it is all three, I am just glad for the heads up. To even think about them making that kind of plan against me was sickening. How could her own sister be that vile to her? What is wrong with Reagan? She clearly has some real issues, that she needs to work through. Her actions towards Raven are contemptible and reprehensible. How could this have gone so far, and yet no one ever thought to stop Reagan? What they are planning is against werewolf law. If proven, they would go away for many years. They both either have to be really desperate, or crazy, to even want to take the chance to try it. But I guess since they said that Reagan had gotten away with it once, she probably thought that she could get away with it this time too. I have never heard Cheryl mention this Reagan girl the first time. I only know who she is because I have seen her at Alpha meetings with her father. As far as I know, Alpha Graham only had one daughter. I had only heard of Reagan, and never heard anything about Raven. When I mentioned it to my parents they both remembered Luna Cassandra being pregnant with twins, but they had only ever seen Reagan too. If this is true, we will no longer have a treaty with Silver Blade after tomorrow night. I was really stressed about the ball because our plan has to work. I will not give up Raven, for anything. I would kill Cheryl before I gave her the opportunity to be my mate. I will not mark Cheryl, Axe linked me, and I nodded in agreement. I just won't drink anything that I don't see made right in front of me. We can't take any chances Axe I linked him back. I want mate. We will claim our mate Axe replied back to me and then went away in my head. Me too buddy me too. Sleep was hard to come by tonight, and I ended up sleeping in the next morning because of it. It is going to be a long day, and I wasn't going to take a chance of a problem occurring because I wasn't focused on our plan. I went to get packed, as I was ready to go right now, even at 10 a.m. I wanted to claim my mate right now. That would beat them at their own game. I wish that I could just come up to Raven, let her realize that she was mine, and mark her right then. But I know that with what happened with her mate the first time, she might be hesitant to allow me to mark her quickly. Justin and I were not the same man, and I was hoping that she would be able to see that. I will do what her father asked. We will take care of this first problem, then he will introduce me to Raven. I was dressed and ready to go at 430, people laughed, because the party was at 6, and I wanted to get there early. My beta, Truett, came with me in the SUV, because I was going to be bringing my Raven, and her stuff back with me to Black Adder. Truett was laughing at how excited I was about my mate. He was unmated too and I was praying that he would meet his mate and be just as head over heels as I was, then he would understand. He just couldn't understand why I loved someone I had not seen properly yet. I cannot explain it to him. When he finds his mate, he will get it. I was in a daze just existing with Truett by my side as Alpha Cole and Luna Olivia both spoke about Raven. Their love for her was clear to see and I could hear the sadness in their voices as they knew I would want to take her back with me tomorrow. I was so impatient until the moment I see the three of them at the top of the stairs. My breath caught in my throat as I looked at her. She was beautiful, and shy, looking down and obviously not comfortable with all the guests staring at her. I don't want them staring at her either as I see numerous men standing straighter as they caught a glimpse of her coming down those stairs. They better stop, or this will turn into a blood bath. She is mine. I look back at her, and she is perfection. Slim built and is very toned. The gold dress fit her to perfection, and the brief glance of her leg that I got as she came down the stairs gave me a great view. Her hair fell down to her waist, shielding her face from view as she came down the stairs. My mate is stunning and I could not be happier. 
the urge to go to her, right now, to tell everyone here that she was mine, was overwhelming. My wolf, Axe, was screaming at me to go claim her, but I see her father heading my way. Truett had walked away about two minutes ago, but I let him as I only had been able to focus on my mate. I don't know what I want to do first when I meet her. Kiss her, hug her, or kneel at her feet and beg her to give me a proper chance as her second chance mate. I am praying that her father is right, and she can accept me, I am not like her first mate. I will spend my life proving it to her. Her father nodded at me as he walked past. My beta was supposed to stay with me, but he had walked off. The plan was already off balance when the jerk I saw catch my mate on the stairs walked up and introduced himself to me. He was going to be the beta here and kept talking, not paying attention to the fact I didn't like him. I could tell that he was looking around at all the unmated she-wolves here for the party. That helped me to calm down, he clearly wasn't interested in my mate, he had just helped her on the stairs. That was good, for him because I didn't know if I could keep from hurting him if he had been interested in Raven. His head came up and he nodded in understanding before he told me, Your beta is my sister's mate. Please take care of her at Black Adder. She will be an excellent beta female for your pack. He got another mind link leaned forward toward me and quietly said, I will see you later, you have someone watching you now, and she may not approach if you are with someone. She knows who I am, so she will stay away until you are free. We all want this over with as quickly as possible. He then walked quickly away, and I just watched from where Alpha Cole had told me to stand. I took a step to the right, so I could see my mate, as she greeted people at the party. She was not enjoying all the people around her, but she gave an actual smile, to each person she met. I stepped back to glance around the room, with my smile freezing on my face. Cheryl is here, and glaring daggers at Raven. I hate that she had even overheard who my mate was. I know it was because Simone was so excited about it that she told her friends, and from there it went out to half the pack. I swear, we could skip meetings and just do pack announcements with the young adults loving to tell everyone what was going on. This wouldn't have happened if they weren't gossiping so much. I will make sure that stops too. It could get my mate hurt or killed. Cheryl was a Gamma's daughter. She was a very strong fighter, and Silas was too. My mate had only been training for two and a half weeks. She will not stand a chance against Cheryl. From the smug smile on Cheryl's face, she knew that my mate was not going to be a challenge for her too. I see Cheryl approach Raven, and I take a step forward to go to stop her. I can't allow her to hurt my mate. This was all my fault and I need to put a stop to it but I ended up stopping short as a woman collided with me. It was barely a bump for me, but her hand made sure to slap my drink out of my hand. She looked up at me in surprise, and she was a very attractive she-wolf, but she was not comparable to my Raven. How could her true mate have even though he got the better sister, he must have been drugged the whole time. This girl is attractive, but her smile doesn't meet her eyes, and she has a practiced smile. One that was guaranteed to get people to do what she asked. It isn't a real smile, it was a schooled one, and one I wouldn't have fallen for even if I hadn't been warned. But she didn't look evil or vicious. She just had something about her that put warning signs up. I was actually surprised at how little warning was coming to me from my wolf. If we had met under different circumstances, I wouldn't have liked her, but I would have had no idea how devious she could be. Oh, I am so sorry. I didn't know that you were about to walk away. This was completely my fault. Wait, do I know you? Didn't we meet at an alpha meeting, about two years ago? My name is Regan, my father is Alpha Graham Sullivan. You probably don't remember me she said and looked down at the floor like she was shy. 
she was clearly trying to get a compliment from me. I did remember her, but it was because she was yelling at one of the servers for her dressing not being on the side of her salad. It was such a small thing and she complained about it for 20 minutes, even though they made it right for her almost immediately. I do actually remember you. I did see you that day I kept the reason why I had recognized her to myself, and she lit up at me having remembered her. Her hair has been styled in a messy bun, with some stray hairs artfully curled to highlight her face. She had a beautiful black strapless dress on. One that she was wearing to clearly show off her mark for all to see. The fact that she planned it that way to try to deliberately hurt my mate, by showing off her mark like that. I was fighting really hard not to lean down and just use one finger to cut her carotid artery. I wanted to, and Axe was glad to oblige. I was really struggling, as to me, it was better to kill her. That is the only way to keep evil people like her from coming back, again and again. Reagan looked up at me smiling and then said, Here, I will go get another glass, as I am the reason that yours was spilled. I haven't drunk from my glass yet, I promise. I was just on my way back from the bar. I am so sorry, I am usually not so clumsy. She handed me her glass of champagne and nods at me. Turning to go back to the bar, like she was going to get another drink. Alpha Cole nods at me, and a man I don't know steps up with a second man behind him and said, Go take this to our lab and see what exactly is in it. We had all watched as he used his gloved hands and poured the drink into one bag and sealed it and put the glass in the other. That was smart, the drink won't wash away any evidence on or in the glass now, and everything was bagged in front of the camera. Seals were put on both bags before the second man left to go take them to the lab. Alpha Cole stepped up and said, Emerson, were you able to see her give him the drink? Yes, both I and my colleague saw the whole encounter, but having a video of it is best. She is an Alpha's daughter, and you will have to have a lot on her for her to see the inside of a cell. Will you have coverage of her spiking the drink too, Cole? The man I suddenly realize is council member Arnold Emerson told Alpha Cole. Well, I actually do have more proof for you Emerson, the guy who tipped us off to this had actually had the same thing happen to him about three weeks ago. Reagan was not his mate, Raven was, and Alpha Graham and Reagan conspired to trick him into a contract that he didn't want to participate in. I will let him tell you the whole story, but she had him drugged to mark her against his will. The same thing that she and Cheryl were trying to do tonight, this time to Brandon here Alpha Cole told him and motioned to a guy standing about ten feet away from us. As he walked up I could see him sizing me up. He was a strong guy, about two inches shorter than my 6'4 frame, but he was younger than me and strong. I could feel the jealousy radiating off of him, and even though I don't have her yet, I gave him a smile, but at least I fought the smirk off. His loss is my gain, and I intend on keeping her as my mate. Before he can even speak we hear raised voices from the area that Raven was in. We all heard the ugly words and implications that Cheryl was hurling at Raven out of jealousy. Alpha Cole told us to stay there, and he headed over to see what was going on. Councilman Emerson started asking a few questions of the guy, who I was told was named Justin, but I wasn't really listening. I was trying to look through the gaps in the people to see if my mate was okay. I saw Beta Timothy and his mate, Amanda, escorting Reagan through the crowd to a door at the back of the event center. Amanda quickly unlocked it, and they slipped out. No one was noticing Reagan being escorted out, as they were all watching the exchange going on between Luna Olivia and Cheryl. I was glad to see that Cheryl looked bad. She had an obvious cut on her face, and my mate was standing there looking glorious, with not a mark on her. Holy crap if Raven had just been training for a little over two weeks and she can take a gamma-ranked she-wolf, a trained warrior on like that. 
My mate really is a force to be reckoned with and I could not be more proud of her. The council member excused himself to head over as the yelling continued, and Luna Olivia sounded pissed. Enjoy your time while you have it, Justin said to me. I am sorry, what did you say to me? I asked him, turning toward him to see if he was dumb enough to repeat himself. I have never in my life had someone willing to be so bold as to challenge me, on anything. He clearly doesn't know who and he is dealing with. I know you heard me Brandon, and I am not worried about you at all. I have Alpha in my bloodline too, I think it would be a fair fight between us if it comes down to it. I can guarantee that it will. I did it because if the council gets enough on Reagan, she might be put to death. Which will free me from the contract. Raven liked me, even before the bond. I messed up, yeah, I admit it. But I am not scared of you. This thing with Reagan, it will take time to work through. So I am letting you know now, so the big, bad Alpha can't claim that you weren't warned. I am coming to get Raven back. Raven was just hurt by my actions, and I can completely understand why she was, and why she rejected me. Reagan drugged me, and because she had Raven's scent on her, Lorne ended up marking her. He only did it because he thought she was Raven. Our bond is still there for me, it is weak, but it is still there. I love her, and I want her. I didn't tell Alpha Cole what was going on to help you, Brandon. I did it because Raven could have died from a broken heart from having her second chance mate snatched away from her just as viciously as I had been. She wouldn't have made it, and if she dies, I wouldn't want to live anymore. I am just living now to make it right with Raven and get her back. I pray to the goddess every day for it. Don't let your foot slip Alpha. I promise you that I will be right there to catch her before she can fall Justin told me as he gave me a smirk, and then walked off. I snapped out of it when I noticed that he was walking towards my mate, and I quickly followed behind him. There is no way that I will let this guy become a pain in my a asterisk s. I will be shutting this down quickly. This guy screwed up and lost her, because of his own actions, I didn't trick him into it and he can cry all he wants that the deal was foul. It very well might have been, yet he accepted it. From what I have heard she will not be taking him back, no matter what lines he tries on her it won't work. I will not be slipping up. All I have ever wanted was my mate. He can keep dreaming if he thinks that he will be swooping in and trying to take her from me. There is no way that I would allow it. I will fight him to the death, and I don't care how cocky this little jerk is, he is not going to be beating me, he can just keep dreaming. If he wasn't willing to fight the pack members in a weak pack like Silver Blade for Raven, he won't stand a snowball's chance against me, or the Black Adder pack. It will be the last bad decision that he ever makes. Chapter 33 Raven's POV I was stunned to hear that Reagan was actually in our cells. I can see that I was not alone in my shock either, the look on her parents' faces was so funny, that I almost started laughing out loud. There was no one more deserving than her. It startled us all, but after I thought about it, it was the best thing I had ever heard. My dad could barely keep the smile off his face too. I see Luna Cassandra looking around in a panic as if she would suddenly locate her daughter in the room like they were being pranked. Miraculously standing there on the side, as if just by looking around Reagan would just spring up, as if my dad had just lied to us all. I knew that wasn't a lie. My dad doesn't lie, Alpha Graham does. I see sweat breaking out on both of their foreheads as they really started to worry. I see the relief on Cassandra's face as she called past me and said, Justin, have you seen Reagan? I don't even want to turn around to look at him. Emerald is fine with keeping our back to him too. I felt nothing when his voice comes from directly behind me and said, No, I haven't seen her, 
Luna Cassandra, why? There was a time, even before I found out that we were mates, that hearing his husky voice did things to me. But that time is past us now. I saw Alpha Graham and Luna Cassandra take off to go search the venue looking for Regan. I find myself hoping that they end up in the cells tonight too. I feel Justin is still standing right behind me, and he is close. Austin stepped up to place himself between me and Justin. Austin didn't say a word, but I know that he is leveling his stare at Justin. I have no idea where Carter is, but I do not want to interact with Justin at all. What if seeing him will cause me pain again? I won't take that chance. You can turn around Raven, our mate is here, he is behind Justin. He will keep us safe Emerald tells me, and my knees get weak. I dip a little and feel my dad grab me and look down at me in concern. Emerald said my mate is here dad, I am scared I whispered to my dad. I heard Justin sigh, as he knows that he is the reason for my fear. I know he feels bad about it now, but that didn't stop him from burying himself in my sister now did it? It also doesn't take my pain away from him having deliberately chosen her, over me even with the knowledge that he was my mate. You have a good man for a second chance mate, Raven. I know him, Brandon had scented you at the mall when we went shopping. Even though it was hard on him to not come and claim you then. He has done nothing but be patient and prepare his pack for your arrival. He already loves you, baby. We had a few things to settle tonight. I will tell you all about it later on. I am right here with you, do you want to meet him, my dad asked me. I nodded, but my heart feels like it is about to beat right out of my chest. Justin scoffs at what my dad just said but stops making the noise when dad looks at him. That's just jealousy rearing its ugly head, he doesn't know my mate or his pack. I turn around and before I can see my mate, Justin steps in front of him and then drops to his knees and said, Raven, please baby. I made a horrible mistake. I want you, I have since I first time that I touched you. I was wrong, and even if it takes me the rest of my days, I want you to come back to me. I still feel the bond between us, baby, I feel it every day. You haven't moved on. I helped you out tonight. Just remember that. I came and told your father last night so Reagan's plans would fall through. Just remember that, okay? You don't have to take me back today. The contract is for five years, I will wait for you, but I wanted you to know that it could be even sooner than that. Reagan could get enough charges against her, that she could be put to death. I will be free of her then, and we can be together. Just don't forget me. Please, Raven. I will love you until my dying day, please just give me another chance. Justin's voice rang out in the room, and all present could tell that he was speaking from his heart. Well, I guess it would be if he were to have one, but I seriously doubt it. He just didn't get it. I had already told him that I was done. He made his choice, it was the wrong one but you can't cry foul when it was him and his actions the whole time. He can hang it up, Emerald and I won't be accepting him, for any reason. He went too far and that was entirely because he slept with my sister. That is a line that should not have been crossed. It doesn't matter what he says to me anymore. He may say that he feels a bond with me, but I feel nothing toward him. Our bond cannot be repaired no matter what sweet words he tries to speak to me. That dying day that you are speaking of, may just be today if you keep harassing my mate a deep voice sounded behind Justin, and my eyes flew up to see the most handsome man that I have ever seen. My mate, Brandon, is clearly a couple of years older than me, but he is gorgeous. Brown hair with a little wave to it on top where it is longer, soft brown eyes that are pulling me in to drown in their depths. 
he is at least four inches taller than me, and he is strong. The power radiating off of him gives me a shiver as he lets Justin know the big mistake that he is making right now. I am drawn to him and want to just throw myself in his arms, but I control myself. I realize that we are surrounded by a group of people watching us like a soap opera right now. I know that I am blushing, and I hope my makeup covers it, but I cannot wait to be in his arms. This is how it is with real mates, the urge to touch, and comfort, is intense, and I cannot resist the pull of it. I take a step forward to go to my mate, when Justin wraps his arms around my waist, effectively stopping me, and pulling me into him. You dare to threaten me over there and then have the nerve to rush over here to touch my mate? Do you have a death wish? Brandon tells Justin. His anger is powerful, but Justin is too dumb to let me go. Justin is continuing to beg me to give him another chance, pulling me even closer into his chest, and then boldly touching my bare back. I tried to pull away again, but he will not release me. I see Stella and her mate Truett both step forward from the entryway to see what is going on between me and Justin. Stella came up and steps behind me, next to my dad and Austin. Brandon slowly walked up to Justin. There is very little space between Justin and me, so I heard it clearly when my mate leaned down to Justin's ear and said, Let. Raven. Go. Now, Justin. I will hurt you if you don't. She is not yours anymore, you made that decision all by yourself. So stop blaming others that it didn't work out the way you thought it would when that choice was made by you. Not Reagan, not Raven. You made the deal, Justin, now you have to live with it. You are making bad choices again today, and if you want to, we can step outside and finish it tonight but you will be releasing her Justin. Justin seems to suddenly realize what he is doing, and in front of so many guests. He was so overcome with emotion when he was trying to tell me how he felt that he didn't realize that we were definitely not alone. I felt his arms loosen from around my waist, as he got up slowly from the floor. He looked around and his ears got pink at the top because he just did this in front of a number of people. He didn't even know the worst of it, Alpha Graham and Luna Cassandra were back in the room and had seen him holding me. I hope they didn't hear what he had said, because they would have really been pissed. I was just glad that he was letting go of me. He doesn't know me, I doubt he knew anything at all about me. But those feelings I had long ago were completely gone, I didn't feel anything at all for him, and he needed to be set straight. Justin you need to get with the Sullivans and go ahead and leave Blood Walker. The only thing you ever felt for me was the tingles from us being mates. You ruined that. Our bond being broken was all because of you. I didn't get to make any decisions about it. Only you and Reagan did, so just leave me in peace. You have distorted my opinion of mates to where I was honestly terrified to get another one. You just grabbed me right now, and I didn't feel tingles, I doubt you did either, so you need to be honest with yourself now. You need to leave me alone, from now on. I have a new mate now, and I won't lose him, especially not over the likes of you. I think you just finally clued in that you actually ended up with the lessor sister. She is not the gift that you thought she was, right? I guess you fell for all the hype in the pack, right? I guarantee you that you will never be happy with her, but you two truly deserve each other. You just need to be patient and wait to see if the goddess will bless you with a second chance mate. If you did save my mate Brandon tonight, or me, as you are professing, then we certainly do appreciate it. But you won't be getting another shot at being with me. We are forever done I told him in a low tone and then walked away from him to go to stand with my mate. The second Brandon's arm came down around me, he pulled me into his side, and I felt much more than a tingle. I looked up at him in shock, 
as I had never felt anything this strong when Justin had stroked my face. This was much stronger, and I felt safe nestled up to him. I put my arm around his waist for him to snuggle me even closer to him. I felt safe and loved, tucked into his side. I wanted to be in his arms all night, every night, for the rest of my life. The smile that blooms across his face at our touching each other lets me know that he feels it too, and is just as excited as I am about it. The comfort that I get as he gently strokes his thumb on my lower back, makes me want to get even closer to him. I continue to look up into his face, and I know that he is the blessing that the goddess is giving me for all the pain, and suffering that I went through. I keep hearing Justin clearing his throat to try to get my attention, but I can't look away from my mate. Brandon drops his head down, and I received my first kiss. It was soft, sweet and absolutely perfect. I cannot stop myself from putting my free arm around his neck and holding his head down. I slid my other arm up from his waist, to also slide around his neck to make sure he wouldn't stop kissing me until I wanted him to. I wish I could stay here wrapped in his arms forever, but suddenly I remember my father and brother are standing behind me, with Olivia, and no one at all is speaking in the room. My mate ends the kiss and I turn towards them blushing, but they are all smiling at me, visibly happy for me. Justin is just looking at me like I betrayed him, as if. He is the only cheater here. Raven, you are absolutely shameless. You set your sister up, try to steal her mate for the second time, and then lie to get her imprisoned here. What won't you do to your poor sister? Alpha Graham said loudly to everyone near us. A few gasps are heard and then the familiar murmuring starts racing through the crowd. I see Olivia go to step forward toward Alpha Graham, but Dad gently takes her hand in his to stop her and calm her down. I didn't seduce anyone, Alpha Graham. This is my mate, Brandon, and I will be accepting him. I didn't approach Justin or ask him to touch me. That was all his idea. You need to remember Alpha, when you start messing around with bonds that the Moon Goddess has put together, you are crossing her, and disobeying her wishes. Selene does not favor those who do that. But I bet not only are you well aware of being punished for disrespecting her wishes, but you knew what Reagan was going to do tonight too, right? I mean you usually do as you and she make your evil plans together usually. So don't play like you didn't know she was up to something, even if you didn't know, you created that monster I told him and the guests around us got even louder. Don't talk to your father like that, Raven. You are too disrespectful. Is that how we raised you? Luna Cassandra said and now I am looking at her stunned. Are you kidding me? You two didn't raise me at all. You taught me nothing at all. You never supported me, and you were never kind to me. The only thing you two ever did was take everything I had from me, allowed my sister to take my true mate, and allowed your pack to do their worst to me my whole life. I don't know what my precious half-sister is up to, but knowing her my whole life, I do know that it wouldn't be anything good. Considering all Reagan does is take what she wants, or tries to hurt me, or both if she can. So, I am going to guess, since she is in the cells, that she was trying to hurt me again, and got caught. That is on her, and not me. So stop trying to pin all of this on me, when clearly she is the one who needs to be lectured by you too, not me. Is she so stupid that she thought that she could come here, to my father's pack, and cause problems here for my party, and not get in trouble? She can only do that at Silver Blade. In the real world, where she is nothing but a malicious slut, there are consequences for your actions I told them, and Luna Cassandra's mouth hung open at what I said. Chapter 34 Carter's POV As soon as we stepped onto the main floor, I smelled the most delightful smell of strawberries and cream. I apologized to Raven, and Austin, 
and went in search of my mate. I cannot lose her, as she is my second chance mate, and I know better than to give her time to get away. I mind linked Austin and told him that I had scented my mate, and he understood. He wants his mate, just as badly as I do, and he was very happy for me. It is fine, I will stay with Raven, you go find your mate. I am happy for you Carter Austin linked me back and I headed into the main area of the venue. It was on the other side of the dance floor where some were already seated at the tables set up in next to the dance floor. I saw a beautiful brunette standing with her back to M, and I had to keep myself from running over to her. Her bright red dress had a strap on one shoulder to hold it up. The side that needed to be marked was free and bared to me, free for me to sink my canines in, to show the world who she was, my mate, and Luna. That is great, easier for me to get this done. She was speaking to an older woman, who looked vaguely familiar to me, but all my attention was back on my mate and my excitement at having found her. I prayed to the goddess that I will have a good mate and not a replay of the one I had just broken the bond with. I hope the goddess is willing to help me out in this. I want a mate that will be my other half, like with my parents. I want the kind of love that they have. I slowed down as I neared her, but my gaze was intense as I approached. The lady saw me coming up and I guessed from the look in my eyes she knew exactly what I was doing there and gave me a bright smile. I smiled back and when my mate turned around to see who the lady was smiling at, I was met with a surprise. Simone. I managed to say. Yes, mate. Simone told me, and then she flashed me a brilliant smile, making my heart start to flip in happiness. I have had a crush on her since we were kids. I just haven't seen her in the last few years. I had no reason to go to her pack, and she had not been here as she got bored at the treaty meetings. I guess I did too, as I had not been participating in them either. The treaties renew every two years and each time, the location changes between us. The last time it was at their pack to sign the treaty, and it was up for renewal in two months. They would have been coming here to do it this time, but it would be her older brother coming here to do the honors now. Her dimpled smile is captivating me, and I cannot look away from her. I thank the goddess for giving me this beautiful woman as my mate. Even though we really haven't seen each other in a while, Simone was special to me. Her mom beamed with happiness, and I knew that her family was there, as I had seen her brothers earlier when I was looking down on the first floor while I watched people arriving. I just hadn't seen Simone or her mom. I sure hadn't scented her, as I would have come straight to her. I grinned back as I am too stunned to carry on an intelligent conversation. This is funny, Carter, Simone told me, and I freeze up. Is she about to reject me? What is funny about this? The thought of loving me? Why is this happening? I feel her grab my hand in both of hers and look down at her. She sees that I am panicking and is trying to calm me. It works, and very quickly, in fact. The tingles are helping to calm me but I still feel bad, is she trying to soothe me, to help me get past the rejection? I gulp, as I am worried. Does she have a boyfriend? I close my eyes and brace myself as I wait for her to do it. Carter, are you okay? What is the matter with you? Simone asked me, and she has concern all over her face as my eyes popped open to look her in the face. Are you not rejecting me? I thought that is what you meant by funny, are you not upset with me being your mate? I asked Simone. No, I have always liked you, Carter, although these new feelings are very much stronger than the ones I used to have toward you. I meant funny about our siblings being mates too Simone said, and I am shocked, who are the other mates? This is the first I heard of one of her two brothers being Raven's mate. Dad said that Raven had a second chance mate, 
but he never said who it was. Just that he was going to tell us all later on tonight. Crew, or Brandon? I asked her, as they are both older than Raven, and I didn't know which one she had received as her mate. I see her dimpled smile flash before she said, Brandon. I am glad for them both, Raven deserved to be happy, and Brandon is a really good guy. I can't remember him being a jerk toward us even though we were a lot younger than him. I believe that he was waiting for his mate too, so that is a good thing too. Shouldn't be a problem with any jealous ex-girlfriends in his pack. He trains a lot, and he will be able to keep my sister safe, and that is the most important thing to me as her brother. I will too, as will Dad, and Austin, but her mate is the one who is with her the most. Her safety is his responsibility, so I am glad that she has him. I smiled too, as just seeing her smile makes my heart do funny things in my chest. I want to K.S.S. her, I want to K.S.S. that cute dimple too, and I want, no, I need to mark her. As soon as possible, as soon as she will let me. I cannot let her go without doing that. I look over and see that dad is nowhere to be found and tried to link him, but he has me blocked. I tried to link my mom to tell her, but she also has me blocked. What an is going on here tonight? I go to link Austin, and he said, not now, dealing with a problem before he drops the link. Is your dad around? I asked Simone and her mother. I wanted to ask my parents if I can just go ahead and mark her. I can't let her get away, and I don't know if that is acceptable or not. I certainly don't want to start off on the wrong foot. I am kicking myself for goofing around and not paying as much attention as I should have in high school. I should know this, but I figured that I would be getting all the information that I needed when Dad trained me to take over, to know how to do things as he does. I wasn't sweating it before, but I am now. Hopefully. She will think that it is charming that I am going to ask permission before I just take her to a corner and mark her as being mine. He is, but he is doing something with your dad. They didn't tell us what, just that it was important, and for us to stay here where we were safe. Oh, he also said for us not to accept any food or drinks from anyone until they got back. Brandon and crew are with them, so I believe it is something serious but I didn't know. Why? What is going on? Simone asked me. I was going to ask permission before marking you, I wanted your parents to be okay with it first, I told her, and her mom smiled even bigger. Thank the goddess she thinks it is out of respect, not because I was scared that Simone might not allow it, or that I shouldn't do it tonight. That is cute, Carter. I appreciate the fact that you want to make sure that we approve of you as mates, but you know that we have always hoped that you two would be. You only have to get Simone to allow you to mark her tonight, our opinions do not matter. The goddess bound you two together for a reason. It is probably the reason that you two were so close to each other while growing up. Even though you two thought you were so sneaky, Walking around the forest just inside the tree line hand in hand, it was just the sweetest thing. I know Olivia and I had prayed about you being mates. It is not like you are first meeting each other Carter, she knows you, and your family. This is a wonderful thing, and I feel like the goddess herself has blessed you both with this. This is between you two, we as your parents. Do not have any business being involved in your decision Simone's mother, Angie, told me. I glanced at my mate and saw her blushing. I don't know if it was because her mom was so happy about us being mates, that she was practically encouraging me to mark her daughter right here next to the dance floor, or not. I bet it was because she just remembered us walking around hand in hand together. We did think that no one knew about it. I loved to hold Simone's hand. It made me feel like we were together as boyfriend and girlfriend, even when we were very young, 
like 10 and 11 years old. We were pretending that we were together, and I know the memory of that is probably the reason for the blush on Simone. I grinned at her and gave her a wink, and her blush grew deeper. Simone, do you accept our bond? Are you willing to be the next Luna of Bloodwalker? I asked her in all seriousness. I was so relieved to see her nodding to me. She is suddenly shy, but I know her, she is not shy. She is a beautiful, strong, she-wolf, one who is smart, and kind and will help me to lead my pack. The draw to make her mine is pulling me hard, and I don't know how much longer I can hold. So, I am glad that she accepted. I am hearing some yelling coming from another room, but the memory of what my father told me comes to mind. I can't go see what is going on. It sounds like girls fighting anyway. I need to stay focused on accepting and marking my mate, so she can't be taken away from me. Both he and mom have drilled into us about not wasting any time when it comes to our mates. That we need to accept the bond and mark our mate. This gives me a small shudder at the thought of marking her, so I excuse us from her mother, and escort her upstairs. I had seen a little private area, with a balcony that overlooks the forest. It is beautiful up there, and when I pulled her behind me onto the balcony and shut the French doors behind me, I appreciated that Mom went to so much trouble for the night. There are tables with lighted umbrellas on them on the ground outside the venue, making the low lights shine as dusk settles, it looks very romantic. The balcony that we are standing on also has lights wrapped around it on the railing, and the sunset seems to want to cooperate as well, as the sky looks gorgeous tonight. I turned to look back at Simone who was also caught up in the beauty of the night and I know that no one here could have stopped me from marking her tonight unless Simone herself insisted on rejecting me. I won't give her time to figure out that she could do better. I love her, the feeling is new to me but I never had a doubt about marking her OR mating with her. I just didn't know if I could do it, without her parents' blessing. I paid more attention to fighting, and the bookwork that came with being the Alpha, than to the ins and outs of marking your mate. It is a beautiful night tonight, Simone, but everything around me pales in comparison to you. I am so glad the Goddess blessed me to be your mate. I have to admit that when we would have those little walks, I liked to pretend to be your boyfriend. That you were mine, and that we were running our pack together. Your mom was right, I have been blessed. I am so glad that she chose you to be my Luna I told her and pulled her to me tipping her face up and k, sing her. This I did know how to do. I have k, sscd a few girls, but I never went any further. Dad was strict about it and he and Mom both warned us about girls in the pack wanting the Luna position. They gave us a serious warning that some of them were willing to get pregnant just to take the position away from the she-wolf that the goddess was going to bless us with. Simone responds to the K.S.S. enthusiastically, I could not have picked a better area for us to come to for us to mark each other. Between the sky showing out, and my stunning mate, my mom could not have planned this out any better if she had tried. I made a mental note to thank her when I go back downstairs. We k-s-s for a few minutes, breaking apart to catch our breath again. Are you sure, Simone? I asked her because this is it, once she is marked, she is mine. She nodded and said, yes, I want to be your mate, Carter. I always have. That was all I needed to hear. I bared my teeth and bit in where her neck and shoulder met. I am almost overcome with emotions, and pleasure as I mark her. I cannot imagine how good it is going to feel when I finish our bond tonight and mate with her. I'll, eat her wound to help it heal, and Simone shuddered against me as I lapped her mark. It was beautiful, with my large black wolf and a smaller tan and white wolf protected behind me on her neck. I am so glad that the dress would let everyone know that she was mine. 
Your turn, Simone said to me and smirked. I undid my tie and pulled it off slowly. I took my jacket off and placed it on the railing as she watched me with sparkling eyes. She is excited to do this, to put her mark on me. I can feel her emotions running through me, and that makes me happy. Pride that I was her mate, attraction as I can smell her AR0USAL getting stronger as she watched me unbuttoning my shirt. I wanted her to have good access, so I made sure that I unbuttoned almost all the way down, so she could see the ABS that I worked hard to earn. Her scent of AR0USAL jumped up much stronger and I couldn't contain my groan. This was going to be so much harder than I thought it was going to be. I want to finish this right now, but at least we are getting the most important part done. She is mine, no one will be taking her away from me. Simone steps forward and lays her left hand on my chest and I swear, I don't know how I am going to be able to hold myself back. My need for her keeps growing as well as an additional problem that will be obvious to anyone that I pass. I get a panicked mind link from Austin, I am sorry Carter. We need some help in here. Where are you at? I am coming I asked him. Follow the yelling Austin links back, and then cuts the link again. I grab my jacket and tell Simone, come with me, we need to go back downstairs. Simone frowns as she knows that something came up, and I know that she is just as disappointed and frustrated as I was that we didn't get to finish this how we wanted to. I hold her hand and don't even bother buttoning up my shirt. I had my jacket and tie in one hand, and Simone's hand in the other, and I am not letting go of what I am holding in either one. I hear the screaming as soon as we start heading down the stairs and when we get to the bottom of the stairs I see that Alpha Graham has lost his mind and is about to attack my sister in his anger. That won't be happening tonight. Chapter 35 Brandon's POV Alpha Graham has lost his freaking mind. I cannot believe that he said that to her. How much has my mate had to put up with living at the Silver Blade Pack? I don't even think as Graham crosses the eight feet between him and Raven with his claws out, his intent is clear, he is going to try to kill her. His focus is solely on her, and it is like he forgets that there are hundreds of people here at this event. He is so angry that he is just reacting without even thinking that there will be consequences for his actions. I stepped in front of Raven shielding her from him, and his claws dig into my upper chest, about two inches underneath my collarbone. I punched him hard in the side of his head and only wished that I had put more force into the blow, as my new intent was to kill him. Graham was knocked out and his claws retract back into his hands as he falls to the floor. He was obviously aiming for Raven's neck, and I knew he was planning to cut her artery and make her bleed to death right here in front of us. Since I am taller than her, his aim was off, and where he dug in would heal. It was not serious and I have been hurt way worse than this before. Things explode after that, with Alpha Cole yelling out orders to put silver cuffs on Graham and take him to the cells. Luna Cassandra jumps forward to try to keep anyone away from Graham, and Cole asked for a second set of cuffs, and for them to be put together in the same cell. Cassandra's crying and begging for them to let them go, and that they will leave right now, but that won't be happening. I wasn't focused on any of that happening, it was all background noise to me as my mate comes around me to start unbuttoning my shirt to see how badly I am wounded. The concern in her eyes is evident, and as she touches my chest she takes my breath, and my pain, away. She is the only thing that I am focusing on, and she is asking for a medical kit. Even though I knew that Carter had already announced that he had linked for their pack doctor to come. The whole family was quite efficient as they all went into dealing with the effects of what had happened. Beta Timothy and his maid Amanda were ushering everyone from the room, with Austin helping them. The room was cleared except for their families, and mates. I saw warriors coming in and people were still trying to look into the room. 
Alpha Cole walked to the doorway and instructed everyone to go get their dinner, and that we would be continuing the party shortly. They all knew it was an T.A. request and left the area. My mate sat me down in a chair and was currently on her knees, between my legs as she cleaned my wounds thoroughly. It was like she wanted no remnant of what Graham had done to me to remain. I will heal, and quickly. My wolf, Axe is very strong, and he was already working on it. I felt no pain at her actions. Axe was present, and almost purring at the touch of our mate. We were both enjoying the view of our beautiful mate with a frown on her forehead at the damage Graham had done to my chest. I can see her concern for me, she is very upset, and I know already without her saying it, that she didn't want me to jump in and help. She may have had a plan, in fact, since she knew him so well, she was probably anticipating his reactions to her words, to get mad enough to attack. I think she might have even been baiting him to do it. I hate that I took the opportunity away from her to do what she was wanting to do. I will even apologize to her for it, but I couldn't stand by and see her get hurt hurt. That was not going to be an option for me. I would rather do this 100 times before I want her to be hurt once. I am sorry, Raven, I tell her in a low tone, trying to keep it between us. Everyone is in the middle of doing something in the room, and it is just us together in the corner, alone. I see surprise cross her face, and she blurts out, What are you sorry for, you have done nothing wrong. If anything I am sorry for this whole thing. I baited him into attacking, and I was planning on taking him down when he tried. I am still new to being able to defend myself and having people who are willing to protect and defend me. I am hoping that getting this treated quickly will allow your wolf to heal you completely, with no scar Raven tells me, and she is spraying my chest with a strong antibiotic to help promote healing. I have felt nothing that hurt or stung me, through this whole process. I don't know if it was the result of my mate's touch, which was so pleasing to me, or her beauty that had captivated me, but she was almost done now. I made a mental note that from now on if Raven were available, she would be the one to treat me for anything. Our mate is wonderful Axe links me, and I agree. I knew you had a plan, I figured you were just telling your truth. I couldn't let him touch you though. You are my mate and I already loved you when I saw you in the mall. The last two weeks have been killing me. I wanted to see you, to touch you, but I knew that you needed time with your family. You had just arrived here, and I felt guilty for taking you away from your family. I wanted them, and you, to have time together. So I tried to be patient, and deal with the problem at my pack before coming here to get you after your party. I hope that you will be happy with coming with me to my pack, the Black Adder. You are my Luna, and I could not be happier for the goddess giving you to me as my mate I told her. I was being honest with her, and I was hoping that she would be happy with coming with me back home tomorrow. I see Raven bite her lip in nervousness, and then look up at me and nod. She was happy with being my mate, and I leaned forward and said, since my shirt is destroyed, go ahead and give me my mark, and then I will mark you in return. Normally the male marks first, but I wanted her to take the lead in this. I was letting her know that the ball was in her court, and she was in control of how this proceeded. I am sure that was not something that she had been given a lot of, knowing just a little of her history. I wanted her to realize that I was happy with letting her have control over me, of us, and that I loved her deeply already. The smile that spread across her face because I wanted her to take this first step, was radiant. I smiled back at her, and she rose to her feet, and I stayed seated. I was going to let her run this herself. I was just going to make it easier for her to mark me. I saw Justin watching us in the doorway still. He had been ushered out of the room too with the rest of the guests. 
he had been shooting daggers at me the whole time that Raven was treating me. That was going to be nice too, a bonus, watching him see that it was absolutely over between them. That his actions had cost him a wonderful woman, and once she marked me as hers that he would have no further recourse to getting her back. It simply wouldn't be happening. I see him stiffen up as Raven gently pushes my shirt over. When he sees her partial face to allow her canines to elongate to mark me, I heard him call out, No, Raven, please don't mark him. Raven never hesitated, her bite sank into my skin, and I had never been happier in my life. But then, I felt her emotions, all her fears and doubts and that all she really ever wanted was to be loved and protected. My jumping in front of her to take the attack had shown her that I loved her and that I would be protecting her, and I will it helped me to bypass a lot of her fears. I will love her the way she wants to be loved her whole life. I will be glad to show her every day. My eyes rolled back with the pleasure I am now receiving from her mark, and I can't stop the shudder as she gently licks my wound, soothing it from her bite. She is a very caring woman. She didn't want to hurt me, even with the bite to mark me. I am now overcome with her emotions, but the biggest one is love. She loves me too, and that makes me euphoric. I will be finishing our bond tonight as soon as I can. I know that this party is for her, but I am sure we can be excused at a normal hour. Justin screamed out in pain, Why, Raven? I asked you to wait on me. Why would you do this to me? I glanced over at him, and I see Luna Cassandra raise her hand to clap him on the face for saying it. He catches her hand and snarls at her, this was all your family's fault. Your husband and daughter colluded to set me up. Yeah, I fell for it, but I had wanted my mate, I had been waiting for my mate. Reagan reminded me that I couldn't safely have Raven. Because of you and Graham. You two allowed your pack to torment and abuse her from a very young age. It is a wonder she is even functioning properly. I swear I will never forgive any of you for it. She is all I can think about, all that I want. I know this is the goddess's punishment for me. Raven feels nothing towards me, and yet I cannot let her go. He releases her wrist and walks briskly away. I know it is because he cannot bear to watch me mark Raven. I bent my head down to her and licked her marking spot making her shudder in anticipation before I let my canines elongate. I gently moved the thin strap on her dress over with my thumb and she gave a shiver at the brush against her skin. I bit down and felt her blood in my mouth as I accepted her as my own. I licked her wound too, to help it heal faster, and felt my world balance around me. I was calmer than I have been since I became an alpha. I felt stronger, and more centered than ever before. She was the perfect she-wolf, and I cannot wait to introduce her to my pack. I am so proud of her being my mate, that I want to tell everyone here that she is mine. I turned around and I see heated glares from angry unmated wolves that felt like I stole her away before they even got to meet her. Jealous glances from the unmated she-wolves that wanted to try to get with me. They are all looking in the room, angry at us for sealing our mate bond. I could care less, I have my beautiful mate, and this is truly the highlight of my life. They all turn to leave now, as they have lost their chance with either of us now. I felt a little bad for Justin though, who wouldn't? He was led to exactly where they wanted him to be to accept someone who was nowhere near the level of the girl he had lost. I know exactly how Reagan got him there, I had the same thing happen to me. I too had been led down the same path because of S asterisk X. It was a powerful way to control someone. So hard to break away from the one who is doing it, to get you to do whatever it is that they want. I had experienced it firsthand myself. I was only 17, and I had fallen for it completely. I think she loved me too, we were each other's firsts. 
Then I heard her with her actual mate. They both broke my heart that day, and I vowed never to be with another until I found my mate. Liza was the daughter of an alpha, she was perfect, or so I thought. Long brown hair, smoky grey eyes, and a strong body. She trained hard, and I thought that we would be mates. So much so that I had slept with her two weeks before I turned eighteen. She had turned eighteen the month before and said that although I was not eighteen yet, she felt that we were going to be mates. I was thrilled, I was convinced that we were mates. Nothing my parents said could convince me otherwise. Liza was my world, until the day I overheard them in the woods. Axe was pretty stealthy, and I had scented her, so I was going to surprise her in the forest. Only I was the one who got the surprise. My stomach sank when I discovered that she just wanted to be Luna. He was always with her, protecting her, as she was an Alpha's daughter. She had two warriors who were her security team, and they were with her almost all the time. They had just had S asterisk X and were laying there wrapped in each other's arms. Happy to be alone together, even for just a short amount of time. I had learned to hide my scent a long time ago, and they never knew I was there. I was just going to leave them alone and go back to the pack house when I heard what he was asking her. Why won't you let me mark you, Liza, it doesn't have to be on your neck. I was thinking inside your thigh, somewhere he won't see it Merrill asked her. Soon. I can't take the chance right now. Just give me one more week here. I just need my own bank card after we are engaged, and then I can get us the money we need to run away together. I will not reject you like my dad said to do. We can live very well off a million dollars. Buy a nice house and put the rest in savings. We can both get jobs and live in the human city. They will never find us. I just can't take the chance of dad finding out before we can safely get away. I won't risk you like that. Dad needs to believe that we rejected each other. It is only for another week, two tops, okay baby. Liza's soothing voice trying to calm her mate was hard to hear. She had never spoken so sweetly to me. I knew their plan, and I was done with it. She wasn't going to be getting a penny from me. They could certainly head out now, to go put their plan into action. I told my parents when I got back to the pack house. They had both suspected that something like that was going on between her and Merrill, but it had fallen on deaf ears. I wasn't going to tell her dad, but I was also not going to allow her to stay at Blackadder and try to keep playing me. When they returned to the pack house, my dad motioned them toward their SUV which was already packed up, and asked them to leave. We would take the second man back to her pack, I knew that they would have to run away quickly and couldn't do it with the second warrior present. I believed that Merrill would be willing to kill him to keep him quiet, Dad did too, and neither of us felt he deserved that. Her father's pack was two hours away from us, so that would give them a couple of hours head start on her dad. They were actually grateful for our allowing them to leave like that. Liza wanted to hug me but I never wanted her to touch me again. I felt dirty from being used like that. I know her dad forced her to come to me, he wanted to have an alliance with our strong pack and he didn't think that her warrior mate was good enough for her. But she clearly loved him and accepted the bond. I heard that eventually, her dad relented, as Liza was his only heir. The warrior is now the alpha there at the falling water pack. The warrior was pretty strong, and her father was glad that it all worked out. But the clues had been there I just didn't notice them. Since I didn't know I thought I was her first, but Meryl was. I was so embarrassed, and angry, after that whole situation. I vowed for it to not happen again. I kept all the she-wolves that let me know that they were good with getting together with me to know that they weren't my mate. I wouldn't be getting into a relationship, or anything at all, with them. 
Most figured it out quickly, and moved on, but not Cheryl. She wanted to just keep it up, day after day, she knew we weren't true mates. She was just hoping that I would be desperate enough at being 24 years old, to be willing to change my rule for fear that I would never meet my mate. I am so glad I waited. I leaned down to kiss the top of Raven's head. She was so worth the wait. She is perfect for me, fitting against me showing that she had been made just for me. Raven looks up at me and smiles a bright, beautiful smile. She is happy too. She is not giving me the same smile she had used earlier while meeting everyone who came in here to meet her. She gave me one that showed just how happy she was for having me as a mate too. I hugged her tightly to me. I cannot wait for this party to be over, it cannot end soon enough for me. I cannot wait to sleep with my mate in my arms, tonight and every night thereafter. Alpha Graham just made a powerful enemy in me. I can feel her emotions, I can see her thoughts, and her looking at him is bringing up some really bad memories. I am destroying our treaty, the minute I get home, but I will let him know about that right now. In front of witnesses, so he can't say that he wasn't told about it. I looked at him, still on his knees on the floor, and said, Oh, by the way, Graham. You can go ahead and destroy our treaty. It is no longer valid anymore. In fact, we will never have a treaty together again. I know who you are now. You are a pitiful excuse for an alpha, and I will be only too glad to let my friends know exactly who you are. Do not be surprised to find that a great number will also destroy their treaties as well I told Graham. You don't have to do that, Brandon I will never bother Raven again. She is your mate, I got upset and I reacted badly. This was all my fault. Raven, I am so sorry for what I just did. I was just so worried about Reagan, and then you were flirting with Justin, and trying to take her mate. I didn't know that you had a new mate. I am sorry for what I did. I will never do it again. Please just let me be free to leave, I will never return here. I still want to be in a treaty with you Brandon. Please don't let one bad decision on my part ruin years of our packs working together Graham said to me, and I scoffed. He hasn't done anything to benefit anyone but himself. He is a bad alpha and his pack needs to be taken away from him, and Reagan. It will be done tomorrow, Graham. You can beg others, but it won't be working on me. But I can guarantee that your pleas will fall on deaf ears I told Graham, enjoying working him up. Why is that young Alpha? You are not in control of everyone. They are free to choose who they have an alliance with, Graham scoffs at me. Because I will let them know that if they are with you, they are no longer with me, I tell him simply. The look of horror on his face is almost comical. But I did not laugh. I was serious, and I wanted him to know that, to feel the true threat in my words. I was absolutely going to do this, and there was nothing that he could do to stop me. The full weight of all the mistakes that he has done to Raven, is now crashing down on his head. He doesn't even know half of it yet. I hope that both Reagan and I are present when he does find out that he has a world of problems that he had no inkling of. Or if you want to pay for more such audiobooks, you can send us a request in a private Facebook group, or join us on WhatsApp, a link is given in the video description. The rest of the audiobooks will be uploaded in the next episode. Join us on Patreon to listen to more unlimited audiobooks.